Mother Nature has accomplished some pretty amazing feats, but it took an uber nerd from Cupertino, California to create the single greatest invention the world has ever known, the iPod. It was an unforgettable fall day in 2001 when Steve Jobs unveiled to the world a product that would forever change the way body-conscious Americans worked out on elliptical machines. Emacs suck! The humans in Toy Story don't look real! But this time, I've got something that'll blow your ears off, literally. I won't need this anymore. I'm going to iPod land. Wait, what was I supposed to say? The iPod, a sleek machine that changed the world, and the man who was only too happy to take credit for it, tonight on Behind the Music That Sucks. It's no secret that kids love their iPods. The super tinny sounded headphones are so friggin' mint for blasting, yo! If you love those iPods so much, why don't you marry them? Sounds funny, but that's exactly what happened in January 2004, when a Silicon Valley software engineer successfully married his 40 gigabyte iPod. Look, I am. But just when it seemed the iPod could do no wrong, Steve Jobs and Apple found themselves challenged like never before. A class action lawsuit was filed on behalf of 107,000 deaf children. It claimed the iPod totally destroyed their eardrums. Are you sure you can't hear anything right now? Then you won't mind if I play this. Please play Exhibit A, Coldplay's Yellow. Your Honor, I rest my case. Enter the code, Saeed! Enter the code! With the tide of controversy clearly shifted in Apple's favor, there was no telling what Steve Jobs and the iPod could do next. That's when Jobs unveiled the iPod Stealth, designed to capture any evildoer wanted by authorities. It performed better than Jobs anticipated. After the success of the iStill, the entire globe embraced the iPod and Steve Jobs' vision. Jobs sent iPods to everyone in Israel and Palestine, and miraculously, the conflict ended. Take that, President Clinton. In fact, these two nations gave the Gaza Strip to Apple, now affectionately called iStrip. And when George W. Bush handed over his troubles in the Middle East to Steve Jobs, we all had a new Iraq. What's next for Steve Jobs and the iPod? The question should be, what's not? We got a peek at some products in the design phase. For starters, the next iPod will be even smaller. And the eye doctor, which can diagnose and treat your ailments, all while you bop along to your favorite Gwen Stefani song. By the time Holla Back Girl is over, so too will be your aches and pains. The way I feel is bananas. B A N A N A S. And last but not least, ready for trial in 2009 is iGod, an iPod like no other. True religion will no longer be a question as Steve Jobs becomes the almighty. You won't believe how fun a Sunday can be, sitting in the comfort of your home, downloading podcast sermons. The title, you guessed it, The Word According to iPod. Pod damn it! You watch that blasphemy, mister! More than a machine, more than a man, it's the past, it's the future, it's the iPod. (laughs) 